Okay, how you doing? I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I want to show you how I use compression in Reaper. Mainly using the compressor that comes with Reaper, Recomp. Now, although I'm doing this in Reaper and I'm using the specific plugin, most compressor plugins are pretty similar. So much of this can really be applied to anything you're using. I just happen to prefer this one as it works great for me. And it's free as it comes with Reaper. So what we're gonna do is go through the most common sources I use compression on. It's not every source, but it's the most important ones for me. And I'm gonna show you how I generally use compression on these sources. But please keep in mind that this is a general overview. It's not how I always do it. And it does depend on the source. But I will say that for the most part, this is how I use compression on these common sources. So let's jump in. Let's start off with a kick drum. Here's our compressor. And before we hear it, let's go through the preset that we're gonna start with. The threshold is pretty much off. The attack is pretty quick and the release is pretty quick. Our ratio is four to one and I have auto makeup gain turned on. This way the output will be pretty consistent. So let's hear what the kick sounds like now. Now let's slowly bring down the threshold. So it compresses. Over here, we can see the gain reduction. Now let's go over with the attack and the release too. With the attack, if we make it really quick, it's gonna cut off the attack of our sound. So the compressor is gonna react very quickly, which on something like a kick drum will shave off the attack or the transient of the sound. See how it's pretty much gone? But if we bring it up, it'll bring back the attack while still compressing the rest of the kick. And if we go too far, it loses it altogether, and no compression is really taking place, as the entire kick sound is passing through and not compressing. Now what the release does is it decides how quickly the compressor comes back. So after it compresses, it'll either stay or it'll snap back for the next attack. So if we start really quickly, It grabs every hit, but if we make it slower, it doesn't bounce back in between each hit, which makes a smoother sound, but it doesn't react on each hit. So around there is what we want. So the attack still cuts through and the release bounces back to grab each hit. Somewhere around there feels pretty good. Before and after. And using a compressor on the kick will make each hit more consistent. So none of the hits jump out in different sections of the song. And each hit sounds more even. Now it's here on a snare drum. Let's hear what it sounds like first. Now let's put the compressor on there and see if we can contain this and bring out the snap. And again, we'll start off by bringing down the threshold. And again, if we make the attack too quick, we'll lose the attack of the sound.
Now to just the release. Before and after. That sounds pretty good right there. Now let's try it out on the room mics. Now if you notice, we're not doing the overhead mics. That's because I don't usually compress the overhead mics an awful lot, maybe just slightly, but not enough that it's worth showing you how I do it. But with the room mics, we can create different room sounds just using compression. Let's see what we have now. Now the room isn't very big, but we can make it sound bigger using compression. And this is a pretty good one to really hear the attack and release times and how they work. Let's make the attack really fast. Notice it cuts off all the attack of the sound. If we slowly bring it up, the attack comes back. Now let's play with the release, and notice how responsive it is as it bounces back after each hit. Right there feels pretty good. Before and after. Notice how much bigger the room sounds. Now let's check out the bass guitar. Let's see what we have now. Let's see if we can contain this to give a more even, low end response to our track. Notice with the release, we want to get it in time. So each hit or movement by the threshold is in time with the song. And we can bring the ratio up a bit to make it more even.
before and after. That sounds a lot more even to me. Now let's try it on vocals. Now you're probably wondering why we didn't compress our piano, acoustic guitar, electric guitar. To be honest, I don't usually compress that stuff that often, especially not acoustic guitar. I don't really care for the way that sounds. Sometimes I'll do a bit of electric guitar if it's a little clean and it's not played very consistently. But for the most part, pianos and guitars, I don't tend to compress them too much. So I didn't think it was worth showing you. But vocals are very important to me for compression. Let's see what we have now. You had me going, I believed everything, every word that you said from the start. Let's hear it with the plug-in. Again, we're starting at four to one. You had me going, I believed everything, every word that you said from the start. And again, we'll play around with the attack and release times to get the sound just right. If the attack is too quick, it's going to cut off all our transients. You had me going, I believed everything, every word that you said from the start. You kept me close, you had me tied to the strings, now you're watching it all fall apart. You spent too much and so you can't get it all like you used to. Now the release time. You had me going, I believed everything, every word that you said from the start. You kept me close, you had me tied to the strings, now you're watching it all fall apart. The quicker this is, the more reactive it is to the sound passing through the threshold. You had me going, I believed everything, every word that you said from the start. You kept me close, you had me tied to the strings, now you're watching it all fall apart. You spent too much and so you can't get it all like you used to. You've got nothing, no, you don't have anything. Notice how it puts the sound more in your face. So it'll sit in front of the track when you're mixing it. And overall, it'll be more consistent. So anyway, this is how I use compression in Reaper. Using the Recomp compressor that comes with Reaper. I hope you learned something. I hope you use it. And I'll see you next time. Thanks.